In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Saint Joseph, pray for us. Dear men, on this sexagesima Sunday, we hear quite a long epistle about the life of Saint Paul, and then the gospel that we hear every year, that we find in two places in the evangelists, both Saint Mark's evangelist, the evangelist, his gospel, and that of Saint Luke. Both gospels, both evangelists talk about the sowing of the seed. So first, the epistle, quite a life that St. Paul had, the life of an apostle, the life of a Christian, he who follows Christ. So I know that we have some suffering in this life and some difficulty, but do we have that much to complain about when we listen to the life of St. Paul? He who followed so intimately our Lord Jesus Christ, he was so taken just by reading the epistles, you, you see that he was so in love with Jesus. Everything he did was just for him. From but, what a persecuting sinner he was, and our Lord knocked him off his horse, and he responded. Maybe not so willingly at first, but then he did respond, and the scales fell off his eyes, and he came to see and become a good Catholic, a priest, apostle. There's a lot of inspiration and example for all of us in this epistle of St. Paul. Yes, not all of you men are called to be the apostle like St. Paul or even a priest, but shall we, should we not all be disciples of our Lord? And how, for you, it's, you're much more intimately connected with our Lord outside of joining a third order or becoming a religious. You're part of the Holy Name Society. You're upholding our Lord Jesus Christ. You're meant to love him, like St. Paul. Years ago, in 1927, Father Francisco Vera was executed for celebrating Mass in Jalisco. And here's what he said. O Christ the King, with ardent jubilation, we swear faithfulness as the generous, noble vassals, speak therefore in order, correct, and command with power, ask of us our blood and our lives, for they are yours, for we belong entirely to you. We are resolved to give them to you in order to defend your banner until your wounded heart triumphs and is exalted, reverenced, and is loved forever. Now, those were his sentiments, but they were the sentiments of many other men and even women, because that is the connection he has, they have, with Christ. And this is actually from the consecration of Mexico to the Sacred Heart, this prayer. We, are, we belong entirely to you. We are resolved to give to you in order, give them to you, our blood and our lives, in order to defend your banner until your wounded heart triumphs. We're not there yet. The triumph of the Sacred Heart of Christ the King has not happened in little places, you can see where it bears fruit. In the homes of you who have enthroned your homes with the Sacred Heart. In some little societies, maybe like our little parish of Our Lady of the Angels, little corners of the world, there is a triumph of Christ the King. But ultimately, we cannot rest until everything belongs entirely to Him. And we will use our blood and our lives for that. We are resolved. A few things like this will also be said in the ceremony of today, so look closely at your booklet, especially you new men. And every month, if you don't want to do it more often, at least once a month, we make this pledge, the Holy Name Pledge, and that's a beautiful prayer of nobility and generosity to stand up and fight. In the Gospel of today, the epistle gives us the model, St. Paul, I tell you that we must give our lives and our blood to be like St. Paul and to love Jesus. But in the gospel today, 
we take a little bit of a different turn, meaning we have to be disposed for what God gives us. And the sowing of the seed, who sows? It's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's a sower. And he's always sowing good things for us. We know this primarily as grace, the divine life, but also gifts that are supernatural. Maybe the gifts of the Holy Ghost, maybe other free gifts of God that we don't give a name to, but that we know we've benefited. So our Lord sows, and then he's sowing to see who is disposed, who will receive, and how will he receive, and how long will he keep the seed. And we hear about that, and our Lord explains it in the gospel, different types of souls, different dispositions of soul. And woe to us if we only end up like the first two. Those who are just hard to God's sowing, nothing ever happens. Or maybe those who jump at the opportunity, but there's nothing to fuel or to irrigate or to manure those seeds so they never grow. And you see, you have those different types, all the way down to the last one, which we hope we can be. That whatever our Lord puts in our soul, it will bear good fruit. Who determines that anyway, whether it bears good fruit? We. Our Lord is the good God. I've told you before that he is as though <clears throat> the ever-nourishing Holy Trinity is pouring out upon us as though from a pitcher all of his gifts and graces and then all of those who are underneath that will all receive in different degrees as how close they are to that stream, how many of them put up an umbrella, how many of them move away from it, that stream of grace, the stream of gifts, the stream of divine life that comes from God, the sower, hopefully finds root in our souls. You should do something today, dear men, as you kneel here, as we go through these ceremonies, as we celebrate this Sexagesima Sunday, you should ask, your, ask yourself, what are the good things and great things God has done for me already? If we're here today, that's a great gift. If we're still Catholic, that's a good gift. If we're in the state of grace, an even greater gift. If we're growing in holiness, that's important. What types of things has the good God done for you already? So you want to be disposed, especially the men, but all of us here, we wanted to be always disposed to receive God's good seed, all of those gifts and graces. But then we must go a little bit further, and of course it's not talked about in this gospel today because it's not the point, but it's a very, very last line, isn't it? Almost. Where we say, but on that, but that on the good ground are they who in a good and perfect heart, hearing the word, keep it and bring forth fruit in patience. So that last line, last few words, fruit in patience. Sometimes in our spiritual life, we want to be saints yesterday. And we're not saints yesterday, then we just throw in the towel. So what's the use? It's too difficult. If it doesn't come immediately to us, the good results, then we throw in the towel. We must bear fruit in patience. Just yesterday, when we had our little question-answer session down in Garden Grove, that was one of the questions. How do we learn patience? What should we do to be patient in this world? Patience, dear Faithful means a willingness to suffer. Patsio. We will bear fruit in the degree that we suffer well. We bear the things that we don't like, the things that rough us up. How well do you bear those? And you will be able to tell yourself, find out how patient you are. So 
not always easy. We may find ourselves patient in one moment and then impatient with something else. And so we find we're not always consistent and we're not saints. Not yet. But again, bear fruit in patience. So we see the little fruits come, we hold on to those, and we keep practicing this patience. And what goes with that, dear men, is you also must be sowers of the seed. You're not priests. All of us here are baptized Catholics, or soon to be, because we have some converts here. You must be a sower of the good seed also. In your own measure, what our Lord gives to you, you give to your neighbor. And you see, all three virtues today are given to us, shown us, faith, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, that this all makes sense, that there's a purpose for it, hope that we will receive this seed and these graces and that we will survive and prosper. But a good prospering tree is really half of what it should be if it never bears fruit. And we heard what our Lord said about that, if a tree that doesn't bear fruit, even though it may look very good, it's going to eventually be cast into the fire. But what about the tree that prospers and bears fruit? And that is charity. When the fruit comes out on the tree, does the tree eat it? No. Somebody else eats it. So you think about that, all of you dear faithful. When you bear a fruit that God has given you in patience, what happens to it? What do you do with it? Hopefully it's good for someone else, a family member, a friend, maybe even an enemy. Who's going to eat of that good fruit that I produced? Your example means so much, men, in the Holy Name Society. Think of the fruits that you can bear for the good of this parish, for the good of your families, for the good of your extended families, for the good of California. It only starts in little seeds, and here we're just a little seed here at Our Lady of the Angels, just a little seed in the big <coughs> cosmos of things. But it can bear great fruit and patience. So practice that patience. Pray to Our Lady and St. Joseph, who certainly were very patient people, knew what it meant to suffer well. And then be ready to receive the indulgence of today. All of you new members receive a plenary indulgence for entering the Holy Name Society. And all of you other members, and when you renew on certain dates, especially the Feast of the Holy Name, and other occasions you can receive partial indulgences. So be ready for those indulgences by your own good, frequent confessions and communions, getting rid of sin so that you're always receptive to the good seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.